remember the last time I've been this pumped and willing to pay retail for a main series Pokemon game. Oh uh, wait, yes I do. Ironically, it was back with Diamond and Pearl. For those who don't know, I've already mentioned the time and again that Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum are among my most, if not the most, hated Pokemon games. To make a long story short, between the HM abuse, Mount fucking Cornet, and overall just a bland region and experience, with a handful of Pokemon being a bit of a saving grace for those games, Sinnoh just doesn't do it for me. But that's not what this video is about, so let me fast forward to Pokemon Legends Arceus. I really have to gather my thoughts in this one, so bear with me, but I promise to honor your time. Shall I begin with the story? Because it reminds me of those books in Canales library that speak of ancient Sinnoh and all of its mythology. And it's going to be real nice to read up on the folklore and see how well established customs, gameplay elements, the people, the features of ancient Sinnoh know the Hisui region plays out as the groundwork for the Sinnoh region. Is that good enough? Of course they're going to release a Pokemon themed Switch Lite. And of course I'll be honest about it. It looks incredibly bland. Yeah, the black buttons are a nice highlight. But come on with this lazy ass shit, man. Yeah, yeah, I get that it's a nod to the Diamond and Pearl DS Lite. But that was like, what, nearly 15 years ago? This isn't the DS Lite. It's more expensive than the DS Lite. Not to mention far more capable, technically speaking. And without making such a big deal about it, because it's really not. That's 200 of my dollars saved. They really should have done a bit more than this, ultimately. Not that the Switch Lite is the best version of the Switch anyway. I'm just saying, the Sword and Shield Switch Lite looks infinitely better, in my humble opinion. You look at the effort in the buttons, the artwork, and its unique color scheme. This is just a metallic gray Diamond and Pearl DS Lite nod that doesn't fall too far from the gray Switch Lite tree. So there's that. Also, if you hear something along the lines of this headline right here that says, the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes might require a launch update to play some content. I doubt this is anything worth worrying about. Didn't new Pokemon snap requires something similar? Let's talk about the file size of the games. The Diamond and Pearl remakes are only 10 gigs each, with Legends Arceus being just 3 bigger, where Sword and Shield is a whopping 12.4 gigs in size, and Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee are not surprisingly only a mere 4.2 gigs in size. The Diamond and Pearl remakes are smaller than Sword and Shield without the paid DLC, while Legends Arceus is only 0.8 gigs bigger than Sword Sword and Shield. I guess it's down to the graphical fidelity and the grand total of features in each of the games that we will surely find out, but I can't help but to double down on my stance concerning how mediocre the Diamond and Pearl remakes are looking so far now that the file size for the games have been revealed, which happen to be smaller than Sword and Shield without their paid DLC. It really looks like they're going to be faithful to Diamond and Pearl after all. But of course my final judgment is still reserved. Now to the meat and potatoes for why I am ex and definitely looking forward to Pokemon Legends Arceus because now we get into the gameplay. Of course with any Pokemon game one of your biggest tasks is to catch Pokemon. Here we get to seek out Pokemon, we get to observe Pokemon, and of course we classically get to weaken and ultimately capture them. But wait did you see this? Why are they going into greater detail when it comes to one of the most basic elements? That's because this is no longer a one if not zero dimensional thing that we have experienced experienced in every other main series Pokemon game for over two decades now. I like not only that Game Freak is really showing that they're at least keeping their ear to the ground with some of the criticism, but they are at the very least slowly trying to break that mold that is their comfort zone by taking what is an extremely stagnant and primitive franchise and experimenting with it. This shit reminds me of SRPGs. The flow of battle in Pokemon Legends Arceus works differently than in prior games in the Pokemon series. In past games, battles have proceeded one turn at a time, with each participating Pokemon typically taking one action per turn. In Legends Arceus, Pokemon stats and other factors determine how many actions each Pokemon gets to take and in what order. You know what else this reminds me of? If you have played Bravely Default, you already know where I'm going. The Brave and Default system, of course. Instead of the typical one-dimensional, everybody takes a turn attacking. The Brave and Default system said, let's try something new. Let's innovate. Let's make it 
it not so simple by planning a strategy around this high risk and high reward system. That's exactly what Legends Arceus reminds me of with its battle system. Yeah, the agile and strong styles are exactly like Brave and Default. Yeah, it's easy to see what aspect of Legends Arceus will be the most influential. Also, I love the idea of completing the first Pokedex when it was first announced, along with Legends Arceus, of course, in February's Pokemon Presents. And here's a reminder, ladies and gents, that Game Freak never said that Pokemon Legends Arceus is going to be your open world slash breath of the wild experience. I'm personally still appreciating Legends Arceus for establishing its own identity. I respect what it's doing as that uh, bold new direction for a main series Pokemon game. For anyone who has played New Pokemon Snap, this is what this is looking like to me for Legends Arceus. And I can't wait to learn more about what research we're doing exactly, along with the rewards we get in return. You are now vulnerable for the first time in any Pokemon game to blacking out due to your, not your Pokemon's health, being completely depleted and just like those classic Tomb Raider games I love so dearly falling from high places also threatens your life and there's item crafting yet something else to distract me from the main goal in the game who knows how good or bad it could get but I'm game anyway so you see the gameplay isn't your typical main series Pokemon fanfare there's more to just going out there throwing pokeballs at a Pokemon and weakening them you aren't just traveling around collecting badges beating gym leaders completing your pokedex and ultimately defeating defeating the Elite Four before you access whatever counts as post-game content. Aside from learning the lore of the Hisui region, there's more depth behind those aspects in Legends Arceus. And I don't know if anybody has noticed this, but you know those Pokeballs you got from Kurt that are only useful for catching, well, you guessed it, heavy Pokemon? They behave differently in this game. They're more effective at catching Pokemon that haven't noticed you. So there's another element of strategy involved when it comes to you catching Pokemon in Legends Arceus. Now I really can't wait to craft all kinds of items, familiar and new, just to see how they behave in this game. This will probably be the easiest choice for me, since I'm not a fan of either of these Pokemon, so I just pick something and be done with that. Of course we all want to know how Arceus is going to play into all this, and how we go about catching it. I'm sure we're going to have that opportunity, right? Aside from the horrible execution, in my humble opinion, when it comes to regional forms, I love everything else about them because of course it gives a lot of old Pokemon a new lease on life. Seriously, when is the last time you saw a Stantler and Basculin be used competitively? That brings me to another realization that I'll get to in a bit, but it is nice that Stantler finally gets some recognition and it got a whole evolution out of that. The same goes for Basculin. I can't say I'm a fan of their design. If you haven't seen my community post yet, yeah, I meant what I said. It may not be of the caliber that my precious Vulcan Corona is, but I'm already loving Hisuian Braviary. It being a psychic and flying type is one thing, but I've always had love for Unovan Braviary. It being a normal and flying type was always disappointing. About as much as its speed is, because after 54 levels, why have such mediocre types? I guess I'll see how Hisuian Braviary turns all of that around. Speaking of mediocre types, Hisuian Growlithe, yeah I get the lore, like these two I am not a fan of its design. It being a fire and rock type is something I feel Hisuian Arcanine that they conveniently withheld a reveal of from us will need to seriously redeem. But that's of course me speaking in hindsight. As I said, the most disappointing thing about regional variants is how their stats differ from their brethren in such an incremental way. Everything else like abilities and types are done much better and I guess make up for that. There's trainer customization to look forward to along with some pre-order bonuses. By the way, Wait, is anyone shocked that there are no Link battles in Legends Arceus? If you think about the more in-depth battle style in Legends Arceus, and even the graphics between Sword, Shield, Green Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus, you should be able to see some kind of conflict that is bound to happen in all of that. How weird would it be if competitive wasn't left in Sword and Shield, but is shared with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? One side has Chibi Art, and the other has the most mediocre excuse for 
or 3D. The same applies to Legends Arceus. Yeah, sure, graphics aren't going to stop competitive play between the games, but what about the battle mechanics of Legends Arceus? Because they're not as one-dimensional as they are in any other main series Pokemon game, as you can clearly see from the Bravely Default style of battling. I guess the most telling thing that explains why there are no Link battles is the most obvious. Pokemon availability. The Dex cut is still a thing. This announcement was made in June of 2019 and hasn't gone anywhere. So who should be surprised if competitive battling is not only restricted to Sword and Shield, but the available Pokemon that you can trade are equally restricted? Because a handful of Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, like the Sinnoh Fossils, as well as the Sinnoh Starters, are not playable in Sword and Shield. So that could definitely be the other reason why. Now that makes me wonder how they're going to handle the new Pokemon as well as the latest and greatest regional variants from the Hisui region outside of Pokemon Home. I wouldn't be surprised if competitive battling as well as what you can trade between the games ends up being some of the most restricted things due to the reality of it all with the Dex cut and how these games battle systems work. And I'll just throw this in here as well. This happens to be the Hisui region in its entirety. Looks familiar, doesn't it? You can tell that they listen. Yeah, sure, Legends Arceus doesn't do anything new concerning all of the RPG gimmicks and mechanics that you can find in plenty of other games, let alone RPGs, but I'm going to give it its flowers for at least finally trying something new in Pokemon as a whole after two decades. Treat it as an introduction into that hopeful future. Not something where you go, oh, this isn't Breath of the Wild. Oh, this didn't check all my boxes with everything that I'm used to playing in other games. It's much healthier to see it as a new big. Beginning. After all, everything starts with a dream, right? Until you take the necessary actions to make it a reality. Love or hate where this game is going and what has been revealed about it so far, by all means, but try to picture this. If this game didn't exist and Game Freak went straight into the ninth generation of Pokemon, off of what Sword and Shield has established, I guarantee you people would be infinitely more upset. You already know how the fallout would go. Rrr, it's the same old shit. Game Freak never does anything. No, where's my open world experience? Game Freak, do something new. Personally, I think they nailed it and even shed it a bit of their comfort zone in the process by creating what I feel is groundwork for that bold new direction for a main series Pokemon game that they promised all the way back in February. Win or lose, this game marks the biggest stride for something new and innovative in all of Pokemon in the 25 years this franchise has existed. And yes, it's even nice to see, graphically speaking, that Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and this game have been cleaned up to look drastically better and even perform better than the stuttering shit they showed us in February that clearly wasn't ready to be released in the wild. Get it? Because it's Pokemon released in the wild. By the way, I'm here all week.